This video shows you examples of cross-pollinated crops pollinated by insects. Here you see a, v a female zucchini flower. You can tell it's a female flower because of the enlarged ovary below the flower and it looks like a mini version of the fruit. Next we pan over to a nearby male flower also being visited by a bee. You can see here that the male flower does not have an enlarged base, meaning it lacks an ovary. So this one's the female flower, and the one beside it has the male flower. Once fertilized, the ovary expands and the ovules develop into seeds, and the flower eventually drops off the developing fruit. We're often asked how far apart to space different varieties in order to reduce cross-pollination. Spacing is most important if you're interested in saving seed. Why? Well, let's use the analogy where a female yellow lab and a male black lab represent a zucchini and summer squash respectively. If the two dogs mate, their traits don't change. The pregnant female yellow lab will not turn into a black lab. It's the puppies that will have the mix of traits. If the pollen from a summer squash is transferred to the female zucchini flower, the resulting zucchini will not look any different than the zucchini pollinated by a male zucchini flower. However, the seeds, the equivalent of the puppies, will have a mix of squash and zucchini traits. When home gardeners get odd surprises, it's typically because the seed source didn't adequately isolate different varieties from one another. And therefore, the next generation, those seeds will produce a plant with a mix of traits from both of those parents. 